He's playing the first ball. What? I love root pills. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. An object that is not moving is said to be at rest. This diver will not start moving until a push or pull is exerted on them. That is the unbalanced force. Think about the game of bowling. The bowling ball is at rest while it's in your hand. It's not until you apply an outside force of your muscles that allows the bowling ball to continue in motion. The bowling pins have to act as an unbalanced force to stop the motion of the ball. The first law is sometimes called the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of all objects to resist any change in motion. Because of inertia, an object at rest will remain at rest until a force makes it move. Likewise, inertia is the reason a moving object stays in motion with the same velocity unless a force changes its speed or direction. For example, the ice skater will continue to move how she's already moving until friction stops her motion. Mass is a measure of inertia. An object that has a small mass has less inertia than an object that has a large mass. So changing the motion of an object that has a small mass is easier than changing the motion of an object that has a large mass. For example, a softball has less mass and therefore less inertia than a bowling ball. Because the softball has a small amount of inertia, it is easy to pitch the softball to change its motion by hitting it with a bat. Imagine how difficult it would be to play softball with a bowling ball. The second law states that the acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied. In this example, the girls are applying a force to accelerate the ride at Walt Disney World. When analyzing the second law, acceleration, mass, and force are compared. In this situation, we have a small mass, therefore requiring a small force to push her down the hall. It's not until we add more mass that's going to require more force to push the objects down the hall. Mass and force are directly related. Newton's second law also focuses on mass and acceleration. This is a small mass with the motorcycle versus the semi-truck, which is a larger mass. As these two um, vehicles are traveling down the road, the smaller mass vehicle will be able to accelerate faster. You see this on the highway with smaller cars passing larger semi-trucks. Semi-trucks have a harder time accelerating because of their larger mass. If you've ever seen a semi-truck stopped at a red light, um, sometimes you'll notice that the cars will go in the other lane and they don't want to be behind the semi-truck. That's because the semi-truck has a harder time going from zero to its final velocity. It takes longer to change the velocity, so its acceleration will be less. As opposed to uh, a motorcycle, which has a small mass, this small mass can go from zero to, let's say, 60 miles an hour a lot faster than the semi-truck. Mass makes a difference when analyzing acceleration. Mass and acceleration are inversely related. The larger the mass, the lower the acceleration. And the smaller the mass, the greater the acceleration. It's a lot easier for this motorcycle to stop suddenly at a red light, and that's because of its mass. It's easier to decelerate, as opposed to the semi-truck, since it's a, such a large mass, it's going to be harder for the semi-truck to stop or to decelerate. You need to think about this when you start learning how to drive and give yourself enough stopping distance. If you're driving a large SUV, you need to provide more stopping distance um, when you get to the red light, as opposed to driving a smaller car. The bigger the mass, the harder it is to change the acceleration. That is, at rest or if it's already moving, it's harder to change the acceleration when you have a bigger mass. Suppose you gave this grocery cart a hard push. This thing's going to go flying and probably go hit a car in the parking lot. Let's say we took that same exact grocery cart, but this time we just 
lightly tapped it. We gave it a little force. Then we're going to see a little acceleration come out of it. And this, this car would not hit another car in the parking lot. So what we're seeing is that big forces provide big acceleration. And small forces provide small acceleration. So force and acceleration are going to be directly related. If one goes up, the other one has to go up. The relationship of acceleration to mass and force can be expressed mathematically with the following equation, A equals F over M. Or you can rearrange it to solve for F and get F equals MA. Newton's second law explains why objects fall to the earth with the same acceleration. In this diagram, with the watermelon and the apple, you can see how the large force of gravity on the watermelon, which is the green arrow down, is offset by its large mass. So, if we were to figure out the acceleration, we'd use the formula for Newton's second law. Knowing that A equals F over M, we would plug in the force of the apple. The force of the apple equals 1 Newton. And the mass of the apple is point. 102 kilograms. If we know that 1 Newton equals 1 kilogram times meters per second squared, and the way, reason why we know this is because if Newton is a force and kilogram is a mass and meters per second squared is acceleration, then we can automatically assume that 1 Newton will equal a kilogram times meters per second squared. So we can rearrange this formula. So we can rearrange our um, units in our problem. Instead of writing a Newton, we can write kilograms times meters per second squared. That way, our units can cancel out. When we do that, and we, and we write our mass in kilograms, We therefore can cancel out the kilograms, and we're left with meters per second squared, which is perfect because we're solving for acceleration. Now you notice that that's the acceleration due to gravity. We can do the same thing for the watermelon, and we'll get 9.8 again. So you can see that the acceleration of the watermelon and the apple are the same when you solve for acceleration.